guys, it is me, Hitmanback, once again with another Destiny video, and today we are going to be doing a review of Destiny in itself. Now, I have never done one of these, and this is something I feel like I should do now that we have just come into year two. Destiny came out in 2014, so we are two years into the supposed 10-year life cycle of the game. Now, supposedly, Destiny 2 is coming out next year. We don't know fully yet what's actually happening with that, but so far in Destiny 1, we are two years in with four expansions and other events throughout the year. So we're gonna do a review of exactly what has happened so far in the game and also what is yet to come. So without further ado, let's get straight into the review. Okay, so for those of you who don't know, Destiny is a first person shooter MMO with an open world format that released in 2014 after eight long years in development and $500 million in funds. Now, the release of this did take so long due to a lot of problems with development teams and people being hired and fired on a regular basis, often taking parts of the story and art elements with them, which did slow down development. Eventually, it did of course release in 2014 to mixed reviews. Some people were giving it extreme clear critical acclaim while others were giving it fairly undesirable reviews. The general consensus for the reasoning behind these undesirable, so to speak, reviews were things such as lack of clear and concise story content, catastrophic surfer problems at the start of the game, and extremely unbalanced PvP, especially considering at the beginning of Destiny's lifespan, Auto rifles in the game were extremely overpowered in PvP, as were fusion rifles, which was furthered by the release of the exotic fusion rifle, the Vex Mythoclast, which essentially became a god gun in PvP and was, in essence, unbeatable. Despite these problems and complaints, however, Destiny actually became one of the most decorated games of the year, winning multiple Game of the Year awards and is still, to this day, the most popular console game on streaming website Twitch and one of the most popular games of all time. On YouTube. Now don't get me wrong, I love Destiny, but this has to be a totally <clears throat> unbiased review of Destiny, so I will have to give its pros and cons. Okay, so we're gonna get straight into this guys with the pros. Just let me take out my <clears throat> my long list here and uh, yeah, let's get started. So Destiny is in its second year and it has spanned four expansions. These obviously started with the original game. We then got the Dark Below, the House of Wolves, the Taken King and then Rise of Iron. Buying the season pass for Destiny in its very first year gave you access to the two DLCs, The Dark Below and The House of Wolves, which were very much so needed in terms of a lot of people's opinions. There was not enough content, nor story missions, nor anything that people wanted within the game, so the DLCs obviously added that then. These expansions came packed with tons of interesting story and lore content, for Destiny, which has become a really integral part of the Destiny community. A lot of YouTubers and streamers are constantly trying to figure out actually what is the full story for Destiny? What is the story behind this character? What is the story behind that character? And how do they kind of mesh together? The lore for Destiny is obviously not all readily available within the story and is something you kind of have to piece together bit by bit by going onto Bungie.net and looking through all the different Grimoire cards which is an extra lore element for Destiny and attaching them to your experience within the game to find out what is actually the full global story of Destiny. Speaking of communities, Destiny has amassed one of the most expansive and most dedicated communities in the gaming world. YouTubers such as Dado, Professor Broman, Rx, and PvP players such as Triple Wreck and Sir Demetrius have helped really bring this game to the forefront of mainstream media in terms of gaming and really helped to make it obviously one of the most popular games of the last couple of years. Destiny in itself has a thriving PvP scene with many players actually choosing to forego the PvE aspect of the game and going into Crucible which is the PvP playlist and playing that to get the gear that they want at the light levels that they need. One of the main focuses for Destiny was actually its social aspect. There's specific social spaces, almost like menu areas, that are basically just an open area where people can buy weapons and armor from vendors. They can interact with other players, join raid teams, join groups, go to strikes, etc. You can actually take your groups of between three and six players to these places and then obviously start your missions from there. And lastly guys, in my long list of pros is going to be that of the life lessons you learn in Destiny. Now, you might be asking why and how on earth can you learn life lessons from Destiny, but 
on a serious note, you can't actually do this from playing the game. Many will agree that they've learned a lot through Destiny. Things such as consolidation, like banking, collecting and saving. Life lessons such as working with others, leading, strategizing, finding workarounds when things don't go your way, and lear learning how to work with others and working in teams to achieve a common goal. Anyway guys, as with any fair and totally fair and unbiased, and did I mention fair and unbiased review of any game there has to be cons, sadly Destiny does actually have a fairly expansive list of these which I will get into now in one second. Sadly guys, some of the cons for Destiny do actually include things like people complaining that it was too expensive because they had to pay for supposed cut content from DLCs such as The Dark Below, House of Wolves, Rise of Iron and The Taken King which was technically true because they were obviously cut from the game but that was to make sure that, that the 10 year plan did actually go through and it was periodic content released rather than just one, fit, one full game at the start and then nothing else. Now to add to the story problems, we do actually have problems with lore. Now people weren't happy about the fact that you did actually have to get some of the lore for Destiny outside of the game. It wasn't all readily available. This lore could be found on Budgie.net in the form of Grimoire cards. Now what are Grimoire cards? These are almost like achievements you get within the game and the Grimoire system is effectively an achievement and trophy system. The higher your Grimoire score, the more you've gotten and therefore the more you've most likely played. These are found on the website and they, they're almost like excerpts from journals and poetry and things that supposed characters in the story of Destiny have written or said and these kind of add to the story of Destiny and like give backgrounds to the exotic weapons, stories of characters and different things like that. They really add more to the game but people were not happy about the fact that you had to actually go outside of the game to find them. One of the main problems with Destiny, one of the main cons was the fact that players could be seriously overpowered in PvP if they had the right weapons. Players were not happy about the fact that some players could get extremely powerful stat rolls on their weapons and then they could not and the fact that some weapons could only be achieved out of things that had to be done with let's say a six of a team of six people from a raid and whereas if they were only playing with one or two people they couldn't get those weapons and people were not happy about that of course it did eventually lead on to people finding ways of actually you know cheating the system and getting certain weapons or finding a quicker way or an easier way to get it and of course using the LFG system on Destiny LFG to find groups of people to play with and then actually get those weapons and armor. PvE and Destiny was not exempt from problems either, things such as the Crota Raid for Destiny did have a serious amount of problems. This was from the very first DLC of Dark Below. So basically you could actually beat the boss at the end of the raid, Crota. You could beat him by taking out your LAN connection from the back of your PlayStation and freezing him while he was down. You could actually do this and then the players could kill him and you'd basically be able to cheese the entire raid. Destiny had a lot of problems like this, like this in different raids. People being able to push bosses off platforms to kill them. People being able to cheat bosses, go invisible and essentially leave them totally vulnerable to your attacks. Uh, things such as story issues and, con and connectivity also had a huge play in the problems in PvE as well as also obviously the social aspect of getting a raid team or getting a team to do a strike. Not all strikes, especially the Nightfall, they do not search for players like the other strikes in Destiny. So people had a lot of problems actually getting people to play with even though Destiny at the height of its uh, of its kind of player base was like 5, 15, it went up, up as far as 30 million players and still people weren't going to find people to play with and that kind of sucked that was a huge problem granted it has been fixed now LFG is one of the most popular sites in terms of gaming websites on the planet because of the amount of people that are looking for people to play with the final problem I want to talk about for Destiny is people conforming to and creating the meta. This started back in the very first part of the game where the Vault of Glass was released 30 days after the, the beginning of the game and the Vex Mythic class released. The Vex Mythic class released and it was overpowered as hell because it was an auto rifle and a fu fusion rifle joined together for the primary slot. Now, they were the two most powerful types of weapons in the game and making one that was both and then allowing it to be a primary weapon with max ammo capacity was absolutely deadly and basically ruined people. PvP for a very long time. People creating keep creating new metas with guns that keep coming out. Currently it's a pulse rifle meta, a month ago it was a hand cannon meta, a month before that it was snipers and auto rifles. It changes all the time but people do this and then people only use those types of weapons. It's a huge problem for people that are trying to use other types of weapons within the game and it can be very difficult. Hopefully this will change soon but I'm not so sure about that actually happening. Anyway, that is it for the review. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this extremely unbiased and very, very fair and totally, did I mention unbiased and fair review of Destiny. I don't love Destiny in any way, that's a lie, I love Destiny. But 
Anyway, hopefully you guys did enjoy. I made it as fair and tried to outline as many of the good and bad points of Destiny as possible. If you did enjoy it, make sure you drop a like, comment, or subscribe. And as always, guys, I have been Hitman. I will see you in the next video. Hitman, out.